When I was a senior in high school, Mandy, the popular girl from my school, decided to throw a massive party for New Year's Eve. Mandy was a single child and her dad was the owner of this major technology company. Her and her parents lived in a great big mansion in one of the nicest neighborhoods in town. It was complete with a pool, hot tub, tennis court, and of course, a great backyard. Mandy had assured everyone that would be going to the party that her parents would be out of town the whole weekend, so nobody would be getting in trouble for partying. Somehow, I don't think Mandy would actually keep the party a secret from her parents anyway. They were the cool kind of parents that didn't care what you did while you were at their house as long as you stayed safe, didn't tear up their stuff, or get the police called. Mandy kept a tight group of friends, and you were lucky to get invited to one of her parties. I was definitely on the more shy side, so getting an invite to this party made me feel pretty good. Most of our senior class had been invited to the New Year's party, along with a few lucky juniors that had managed to impress Mandy in one way or another. It would be a huge bonfire party that would take place in Mandy's backyard. Most parents in our town knew of Mandy and her famous parties. They also knew that there was often underage drinking involved during them. Because of this, I had to come up with a cover-up plan for the night with my best friend, Jess. We decided I would tell my parents that I would be spending the night at her house, and she would tell her parents that she was spending the night at mine. This would be pretty believable since we normally spent the holiday together anyway. I had to make sure my parents believed my cover-up, so I packed an overnight bag and left the house in just sweats and a hoodie with no makeup on. I had packed the outfit I was going to wear along with my makeup and curling iron in my bag. Jess's parents were going to be home late, so we chose her house to get ready. We were both wearing outfits that our parents would definitely not approve of, along with lots of bold makeup. We drove my car to the party. Even though we were a few minutes early, the party was already crowded and cars were lined all down the street of Mandy's house. Part of me worried that the party would get busted and we might all get in serious trouble, but the chance of that happening only added to the excitement. As Jess and I made our way into the house, we were greeted by Mandy. She had a guy on either side of her. Welcome guys, help yourself to any of the booze in the kitchen, the party's out back, she said to us with a smile. We thanked her and headed to the kitchen to get some drinks. I was surprised to see the amount of different alcohol bottles that lined the kitchen counter. Some of them looked especially fancy, and I wondered if they had been taken from Mandy's dad's collection. We should start with something light, Jess said. She grabbed a bottle of white wine and poured a small cup for herself and a small cup for me. Drinks in hand, we headed to the enormous backyard. A huge bonfire had been started in the middle of the yard and people were roasting hot dogs and marshmallows. We live in Texas, so even though it was winter, it wasn't too cold as long as you stayed by the fire. Jess and I came across a group of guys we knew from class and we were all huddled up by the fire, chatting, laughing, and drinking. I drank more than I ever had before downing cup after cup. At one point during the party, I heard someone yelling from the front of the house. It turned out that a group of kids from a different school in town had heard about the party and tried crashing it. Because the party was already so full, Mandy had to turn them down and told them they had to leave. An argument had broken out, but they eventually left. By the time that 11.45 p.m. came around and everyone packed into Mandy's house to watch the New Year's countdown on TV, I was definitely feeling the effects of my drinks. I was more relaxed than ever and was having a great time. Right as the countdown to midnight started, there was a loud buzz at the front door. The next thing I knew, there were red and blue lights flashing outside the window. Cops, everybody run, someone yelled, and the house immediately turned into complete chaos. Everyone was running and yelling in different directions. It was hard to put together what had happened. The kids from the other school got mad when they found out they couldn't come to the party. So they called the police and reported the party. To get revenge, they told the police that there was underage drinking going on. Jess grabbed my hand and began pulling me upstairs. Come on, we have to hide, she whispered to me. We went into Mandy's parents' bedroom, locking the door behind us. There was a bathroom connected to their bedroom and we ran in there to look for a hiding spot. A few people had already thought of the spot before we did and they were hiding in closets, cabinets, wherever they could fit themselves. Jess and I climbed into Mandy's mom's wardrobe and put a bunch of clothes in front of ourselves to hide. We waited there for what felt like forever, trying to be as quiet as we could. Downstairs, I could hear sirens, banging, and lots of yelling. Police, open up, a voice called out. 
Eventually, someone must have opened the door because I heard several voices calling out, Freeze! You're under arrest! It sounded like our whole town's police department was in Mandy's house. I listened as kid after kid got arrested. I held my breath, praying that the police wouldn't think to check out this room. Sure enough, about 15 minutes later, there was a loud banging on the bedroom door. This is the police. Open up or we're knocking this door down. When nobody answered, there was another loud bang at the door and the sound of smashing wood. We've got to run, I whispered to Jess. No, just stay where you are. We'll have a better chance of not getting caught here, she told me. There was another loud bang at the door and I couldn't stay still any longer. I quietly climbed out of the wardrobe and made my way to the bathroom window. I used all my strength to pull the window open and climb outside of it. There was a big oak tree right outside of the window and I grabbed onto the thickest branch I could find and pulled myself onto the tree. I had grown up climbing trees, but this was the first time I had ever done so after a night of drinking. So this was trickier than I had expected. My hands were sweaty with nerves and I nearly fell more than a couple times before finally reaching the ground. I quickly took a look around and didn't see any police nearby. So I quickly began sprinting towards the woods at the end of the yard. I ran as fast as I could and I didn't look back until I heard a voice far behind me yell, hey, what are you doing? Stop right now. I could see an officer chasing after me on foot, but by this point I had reached the woods. I took off running through the forest as fast as I could without any particular destination in mind. I was already full of regret. There was no way I could escape the police now and I would probably be in even bigger trouble because I ran. What had I been thinking? I knew I needed to act quickly, so I ran up to the tallest tree I could find and quickly climbed up it as fast as I could. I was so high up that I could see Mandy's neighborhood off in the distance. As police swarmed through the woods, I held onto the tree for dear life and stayed as quiet as I could. The police were expecting me to be on the ground running, not up high in a tree. After I felt like I had waited a safe amount of time, I slowly climbed out of the tree and ran out of the woods into the clearing, towards where Mandy's street was. I had my car keys, but I was in no position to drive. I grabbed my bag from the car and took off back towards my house on foot. I could worry about what excuse I would give my parents in the morning. I got back to my house a little after 1 a.m. I quietly let myself in and went straight to my bedroom. It was only then that I looked at my phone. I had about a million missed texts and calls from Jess. She told me that she and everyone else underage on the property that had been found by the police that night with alcohol in their system was ticketed and would be forced to appear in court the next day. They would temporarily lose their driver's license and have to pay a fine. I quickly sent Jess a text back, telling her that I had managed to escape and was safe back at home. She had to tell her parents about the trouble she had gotten into and she had gotten grounded for over a month. She told me as far as she knew, I was the only person who had managed to escape the party without getting in trouble that day. I went to sleep that night feeling relieved, but also slightly guilty. I knew I deserved to have gotten in trouble just as much as any one of my other classmates. When I was around eight or nine, my parents decided that they wanted to go enjoy a kid-free New Year's Eve party without my baby sister, Emma, or me. Our next door neighbor, Ruth, never had anything going on. And so when my parents asked her to watch us, she was only too excited. My parents packed a small bag for me and a small bag for Emma before dropping us off at Ruth's doorstep and promising they would be back to get us in the morning. Ruth was a heavy smoker and just about every surface in her house was covered in a cloud of smoke and debris. I started coughing about the same moment I stepped inside. I didn't know much about Ruth besides the fact that she was old, retired, and didn't have any children of her own. That night at dinner, Ruth prepared this disgusting vomit green pea soup for my sister and me. She placed a bowl of the disgusting stuff in front of me and another in front of my sister. I knew Ruth wasn't somebody to mess with, so I quickly forced down the bowl of soup, trying my best not to throw up. It tasted worse than rotten seaweed. My sister was only a baby though, and when Emma cried and refused to eat it, Ruth became very angry. She roughly ripped her out from her high chair and locked her somewhere upstairs. 
I was terrified as I listened to my baby sister screaming her head off while I could do nothing to help her. That night, Ruth tucked me into her own bed before eventually falling asleep herself. The second I heard her snoring, I snuck out of the room as quietly as I could and crept up the stairs in search of my sister. Much to my horror and disgust, I eventually found Emma, locked up in a dog cage, fast asleep. I pulled my sister out and covered her mouth to keep her from screaming as I slowly carried her down the steps and out the door of the house. I was so sure Emma was going to start screaming and give us away, but somehow it felt like she understood she needed to stay quiet so we could both escape. Once we got out of Ruth's house, I headed straight to the house on the corner of our street. It belonged to a woman with six kids named Rachel. I had watched before how kindly Rachel had treated her own kids, and I knew she was somebody we could trust. I quickly explained what Ruth had done to my sister, and she pulled us both inside her home. She handed one popsicle to me and one to my sister, while she and her husband called the police and our parents. It wasn't until the next morning that my parents came and picked us up and brought us back home. I remember my parents tearfully apologizing for what we had been through, but I don't remember what ever happened to that evil woman, Ruth. While I was growing up in middle school, I always spent the New Year's holiday with my family. Call me weird or unpopular, all you want. But there was something so fun about dressing up in my coziest set of pajamas and hanging out with my parents while watching the ball drop on television that was so much fun. We would eat way too much and drink non-alcoholic champagne while celebrating the New Year. I was the only kid at the time, so the simple celebration was a lot of fun for me. That was until the year that it was decided we would hold the party at my Uncle Sam's house instead. Even though everyone in my family referred to him as Uncle Sam, Sam wasn't actually related to me at all. He was my dad's old boss from a long time ago. Sam didn't have any more living family members of his own, so he would often be invited to my family's gatherings and parties. This was the first time, however, that we had ever gone over to his house. Sam lived in a large yet old house just on the outskirts of town. The house was pretty on the outside, but unkept on the inside. It was dusty and somehow felt creepy and unfriendly. I don't know if it was just because it was an unfamiliar place to me or what, but I felt like I couldn't wait for the night to be over so I could just go home. Because the adults had all been partying, it had been arranged for us to spend the night at Sam's house and leave the next morning. My parents would be taking a room upstairs while I had a guest room downstairs. Normally on New Year's Eve, I enjoyed staying up well past midnight watching movies with my parents, but this time it was different. Sam creeped me out. I kept watching him staring at me when my parents weren't looking, in a way that made me feel uncomfortable. I didn't want to say anything to my parents and ruin their fun. Besides, they would just say I was imagining things anyways. So after the clock struck midnight, I told everyone goodnight and headed to the guest room where I'd be sleeping. The adults all kept partying into the night, so it took me a little while to drift off to sleep. At some point during the night, I remember a weird feeling coming across me. I felt like I was being watched. The weird feeling was enough to wake me up out of my sleep. I told myself I was probably just dreaming, but the feeling didn't go away. Eventually, I couldn't ignore it anymore, so I sat up straight in my bed to check the clock and see what time it was. Before I could do that, I came face to face with a very disturbing sight. It was Sam sitting on the corner of my bed, a camcorder in hand, pointed directly at me. He had been recording me while I slept. Terrified, I started screaming out for my parents. I had only gotten a few screams out when Sam slammed his hand over my mouth to quiet me. The next thing I remember is my parents bursting into the room and seeing Sam sitting on my bed. I had never seen my dad so angry before. My mom practically had to pull him away from Sam after he landed several punches to his face. After a lot of yelling, we ended up leaving in the middle of the night and heading back home. That was the last time I ever saw Sam, and I never asked my parents about him again. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of our newest videos on Anna Horror, Three True WhatsApp Horror Stories. It's guaranteed to send a shiver down your spine. Sleep tight.